We're at the EA Showcase event. We've been playing uh, Star Wars The Old Republic for most of the morning. And I'm afraid to say that it's possibly going to turn me into an MMO player. But anyway, that's sort of another day's argument. Um, so I have one of the producers here. Would you like to introduce yourself to the folks? Sure. Uh, my name is Daniel Erickson. I'm the lead writer for The Old Republic. Lead writer is good. So, being a writer for something like a Star Wars game, yeah, it's got to have its own challenges as opposed to thinking about what would I like to write a game about. <laughs> uh, it does, but it's actually they're they're really not what you think about in most IDs. Star Wars is so big and so open, and Lucas is very positive about growing the IP and growing the galaxy. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons we moved and did Knights of the Old Republic in the first place and took it away from movies is we get to build all our characters, all our stuff. It just means when I think, oh, I want to do this plot about this weird alien group, I don't actually have to come up with one. I can probably just go find one already. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess you must have spent months and months just reading Star Wars books. And oh my, oh my. <laughs> there is so much Star Wars out there. Yeah. And some of it's canon, some of it's non-canon. Um, but all of it is treasured by someone. Yeah. And then obviously we've got sort of three different generations of Star Wars fans. We've got the old timers like us who were like, first movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got the people who never saw Star Wars until the new movies. Mm -hmm. And then there's actually another generation after them that really are coming up on the Clone Wars. Yeah. And that is Star Wars to them. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we need to understand all that and then understand the whole extended universe for the people who are really into the books and the comics and all of that stuff and try to try to bring it all together and respect it all and make a make a galaxy where it all <coughs> makes sense that it's included. So, um, obviously it's it's easier when you're taking this in. The first thing you say is, this is three and a half thousand years before Darth yeah. Vader came out. So, it's going to be the Star Wars universe, but it's just not quite as you'd expect it. What were the, I suppose, challenges uh, from a design and writing point of view? The, how do you retro the, uh, the universe? Or do you worry too much about it and say, well, this is a, an advanced universe, though? Yeah, one of the things that, uh, and yeah, so you know, like, I've just been a senior designer on the project since day one as well, so you don't have to keep yourself in writing questions. <laughs> uh, the, one of the things that's great about it, we do with Nice Little Republic, is, yeah, I mean, we, we retro it, but we retro it maybe 10%. Star Wars is an advanced universe. A thousand years before our time period, they already had lightsabers yeah. and ships and lasers and all of it, so we kind of rough it up and box it up a little bit, but really, it's an excuse to let people have their own stories and to be the most important people in the galaxy right then, but still let them come in and feel like they're in the Star Wars that they know and love. So this is going to be a story-driven MMO, um, and I've been getting a glimpse at that story just from what I've been playing earlier. Um, what can you tell us about the story without giving too much away, without ruining it for people? Is it, it's the quest of a individual person or more as a team of people? Uh, well, it's kind of both because we've got two things going on, right? We've got the class quests and there are eight different class stories that go all the way through the game. So every class you pick, uh, you're playing something completely different. You were actually seeing because you were teamed up with somebody that was the same one, but if you're teamed up with somebody that's got something else, they're doing a completely different set of stuff. But there's also the world quests. So there's a quest you could tell that you could do together and a quest that don't go across them. And so, if you think of the old movies, all right, there's the Empire, and they're taking down the Rebellion, and they're fighting back against it, and that's everybody's story. Yeah. Everybody's involved with that. But Luke is becoming a Jedi, and dealing with Yoda, and dealing with his stuff. Han is dealing with Jabba the Hutt, who's after him, right? Everybody's sort of got their own personal threads going yeah. through it. Um, the the game you're, you're showing us downstairs is, uh, it's the whole game you were saying, it's, it's all there. Oh, yeah. If we were to sit here for the next six months and grind it out. <laughs> that is, uh, and that is actually problem, part of the problem of why, you know, we hit the occasional lag thing or yeah. something. We don't have our European servers up. You guys are actually playing from America right yeah, now. Sir, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it runs pretty well for, uh, for, for having right, across yeah. the... Uh, Definitely. And so, how close to completion is the game now? Um, we try not to talk about it. I mean, we are still pre-alpha. Okay. So it is still in production. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the things is we try not to talk about exact stages for stuff because anybody who's familiar with Bioware products know that um, we polish it until yeah. it's polished. Absolutely. Yeah. So. That's okay. Um, what's going to take 
MMO players from other franchises and become a playlist instead? Is it, it's, it's got to be more than just it's Star Wars. Well, there, there's Star Wars appeal, obviously. Um, what we're hoping is that uh, we see every time a really good game comes out, what happens is they very rarely cannibalize. Good games come out and they grow the market. Right? They create new players. They create new places. All of a sudden, you know, the cap for games, which we used to know, right? No more than 200,000 people were ever going to play an MMO. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is just known fact. Yeah. Right? <laughs> EverQuest had already tapped that whole market. This um, may have something to say about that nowadays, of course. <laughs> what we're hoping is that um, we offer something new that people haven't seen that actually not only brings people who are, uh, you know, they may love what they're doing right now or they may be out of MMO stuff, um, but also people who have always been sort of missing that other piece. It's when we talk about the fourth pillar. Uh, it always kind of felt to us like we, we opened up our pen and paper RPG box and there was a setting, but there was no adventure and there was no game master. And that's kind of what MMOs felt like. Um, and so giving the context, giving a story, giving something that actually feels more like, well, that there's an RPG in your MMO RPG, we're hoping we'll actually bring in not just MMO players who say, hey, I'd like to actually feel a little bit more connected to what I'm doing, but also players who are RPG fans, players who are uh, coming from different places. One of the things about story is that it's the least hardcore thing you can do. Everybody understands a story. It may take them a while to get up on the MMO tropes. It may get them a while to sort of understand everything that's going on. But you saw at the beginning of the game, you're in conversation, you're making decisions, you're getting attached to your character, and it's something that everybody can come and get into. And what about the, the more kind of social aspect to the MMO style of game? When there are people in other games who will not be interested in grinding out quests or dungeons or whatever else, they just want to have the, the social setting. Will, will there be scope for that sort of thing in this universe? Absolutely, and we, w we always want to make sure that um, we are making the social world as accessible as possible. Obviously, we are not a world sim game. You know, we are always, our thing is always like, this is not a day in the life of Star Wars. Yeah. This is playing the movies sure. of Star Wars. Um, but that said, you know, we've got cantina spaces. We've got spaces that are definitely there for socializing. You can take people on your ship and run around with them. Uh, one of the giant announcements, obviously, here is we announced our crafting system uh, to really show, like, how players are interact how players are going to deal with each other, etc. So, um, it's a it's a, a social world. It's sort of the whole point of it, right? Absolutely. Oh, oh, I think that more or less covers all I wanted to ask. Okay, so, fantastic. Thanks very much for your time. Ah, you're Thank you. Back to